So a couple weeks ago, I showed you how to make this game. The game has the leaderboard and the goal of the game is to start the game and there's a bunch of tiles here and you have to basically match the images. But in the version that I showed you, can you spot the difference? We have this one, which is the real version that's live that you can play. And then we have this version. When you start the game, there's just these tiles here. What's the difference? It's the timer. How do you add this dang timer? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you right now. So if we go over to Glide, I'm gonna go to the demo projects. That's the one we're looking at right here. And let me go ahead and reset this. I'm gonna quit the game. And this would bring us back to the screen. So we have this start new game. And every time the game starts, if we go and look at the data, something populates the start time. So basically the time that the game starts populates right here. So if I start, start a new game and go back, you'll see right here that there is a time right there. And so in order to show the time, basically all we have to do is add a stopwatch component. And I'll put that at the top. And you can see automatically it's already, it's already counting for us. So it's, it, it's basically taking the time the game started and then counting from then. And so we can do start time as the start time and then duration as the start time. And this duration doesn't matter in this use case because we're going to be hiding or yeah, basically hiding these buttons here so that you don't see them and we only see the timer. Like you can see here, we're only seeing the timer. And this is where I tell you proceed at your own risk because whenever you add custom styling inside of Glide, it will likely break at some point in the future. Um, it typically does for me at some point. It might be six months down the road, but eventually it does cause issues. So what we're gonna add to add some custom styling to hide all this extra stuff is a rich text component. And then we can set the uh, markdown text. We're actually starting to type in here. So I'm gonna do pre span and then style. And then that's how you like get into the CSS world inside of Glide. And then now I want to actually start hiding things. So I'm going to do a right click. I can't do that, that there. Let's do a control shift I. So that brings up this little window. Let's move this say over to the right. And basically what we're going to be looking for are some of the little tags that are supporting this. So if you know any kind of HTML, this will be familiar to you. Um, so the first one we want to do, let me go ahead and move me out of the way, make myself smaller, is let's hide these buttons here. Those are probably the simplest. So let's click on those. I just use this little clicker up here to click on these elements inside of Google Chrome. If we throw this over, you can see we have an arrow here and then there's a reset timer and then a start stop timer. So that's what these little buttons are called. You can see when I click on them, they're, they're highlighted over here. Sorry, it's hard to see. So basically what we need to do for that is we'll do, we'll do some CSS styling on top of that reset timer. So let me go ahead and type this in here. Now, I just pasted it over from what I had before so you don't have to wait through me typing. But one thing that is important here, pun intended, uh, is this important tag. So if I get rid of that, you'll see that the buttons are missing. So if you added this and it was just display none and the buttons aren't going display none, they're not hiding. Display none means to hide it from the screen or not to render it in the screen. Sometimes CSS, just the order in which it's loaded on the screen affects things. So if you type in apostrophe, uh, not uh, exclamation port, point important, that will make this override any other CSS that is on the screen. And so now basically we do the same thing for um, this spinning wheel as well. So we can go here. You can see we have, looks like it's pulling up this SVG right below this class timer container. So then I can do um, something like this. So then I can call out dot timer container do get the SVG inside of the class timer container. And then again, do display none. And then same thing. Now we just need to shrink this so that it's not taking up a bunch of space. And so then we can just call that um, class timer container and do 40 pixels of height, call it as important, and then we're done. And so now we have this timer that shows while we're actually playing the game. 
And so if I finish the game, let's see how I can do it. I should be good at this at this point. Got my caterpillar, got my bike, got my smiley face, and then boom, you saw it landed on 415. That's how long it took me. So now if I go back to the home screen, you basically have 415, which is 255 seconds. Now, if you want to see how I made that matching game and how I made this screen where it shows like the elapsed time, I do have the full tutorial and I have that linked right here on the screen or right down below. But other than that, thanks for watching. And that's how you add a stopwatch slash timer to your game inside of Glide.